Hey everyone, what's up and welcome to another portfolio review. I haven't done this in a while, but this morning I got two emails with two portfolios asking for a review and they were so different that I thought it would actually be very interesting to kind of compare them one next to another so you can understand what I think is a good approach and what could be improved upon. So let's dive right into it. So the first portfolio is by Rodolfo Melo. He's a Brazilian designer and he's currently living in Mexico City, I think. So this is the front page. There is no scroll, just these four um, works that you can see here. Now, just looking at this, I have a problem because I don't know where I'm at. I don't know what is the website. I can just see here some letters, RFM, but um, I'm not sure who is this. Is this an agency? Is this a freelancer? What is he good at doing? Because it's, it's a bit hard to tell. Is he a designer? Is he interaction designer? I don't really know. It's, it's a bit hard to tell. Let me click on one of those works and, and go inside. So inside we can see this is actually a branding project. And we do have some text here, both in Portuguese and in English and in Spanish actually, so three languages. And we have the images here on the left, all the brand assets and some mock-ups. So basically I'm not, I'm not gonna discuss the quality of the design work, even though I think it's, it's pretty good. Uh, I'm just gonna talk portfolio wise. I think even though it's a good work, I think it's lacking in context a little bit. Um, I would like to understand, except for who the, who the client is, what were the reasoning behind how you came up with the idea and what was the process? I like to understand the, how you work and, and what is the process behind it. So let's check out another work. So this is Art Direction. Let me see in English, Consulting. Right, so when I go over websites really quickly, it's really hard for me to understand right now what did you do here? What was the project? And I see here that there are credits to illustrators and animators. So very quickly, without reading all the text, I find it hard to understand what was your role in the project. So basically, when I'm looking at this, again, I'm lacking context here. Who are you? What do you do? How are you unique? And remember, a portfolio is at the end of it is is kind of a sales page. You're trying to sell yourself and showing the work is just one of the aspects of how to best sell yourself um, as a designer or, or as a professional. We do have the work here, but we don't know much about you. There's a little link here with bio that I can click on and um, and see a little bit about who you are and your personality and what do you do. Um, I would love this to be a bit more front and center so I would know what to expect and who I will be working with if I hire you. So that's what I think about this uh, website of Rodolfo. Now let's check out the other portfolio of Daniel James. So first of all, I can see here the little photo so I can get a sense of this is a person. This is a website of a person. This is who Daniel is. And first thing he says, designer that knows how to code. Let's make uh, an awesome website. So very clearly I know what's the unique value proposition here. He's unique because he's a designer and he knows how to code. And what he does is he makes awesome website. This is super clear, super fast. There is very big call to action, send me a message or uh, a portfolio and I can scroll down here um, and really quickly see the works and I can either visit the website which I love visiting websites like the real website because a lot of times designers will show amazing you know amazing images on the portfolio but the website itself never turned out to be that awesome so when you put a real website that shows that you've uh, got the project to actually launching and made sure that it really looks great when it's live. It showed that you're confident and you show that you're doing real work, which I think is great. Also read the case study on Behance. So here we have a case study with the background, with the research concept. This is what I like to see. This is showing the process, showing the thinking behind the solution. I like this. This looks really, really solid. Um, let's see what else we have here. 
we have some more websites then down here we have testimonials i think testimonials are so important this shows that you worked with real customers and that they had good experience so kudos daniel for putting in some testimonials what i don't see here by the way is who wrote those testimonials how i mean you didn't just made them up right so i would love to see the name of the person and name of the company of the person who said you did a good job that would make it look more credible because right now i don't know it's a bit shady that you didn't say who they are um let's start a project schedule a call i think this is this is awesome the fact that I can just get on your calendar and uh, get on a call with you, I think this is a great call to action. Here it says free consultation. That's actually awesome. I think schedule, if you would replace schedule a call with get a free consultation, I think you'll have more conversion rate because this is a better call to action. But overall, I really like this website because I think it does a great job at selling explaining super quickly who you are, what you do, what's the benefit of working with you, showing the work, but also showing that clients love working with you. So Daniel, I think great portfolio. I mean, I would hire you. I think that's that's a pretty solid. So I think you could see the differences between the approaches. Um, Rodolfo's website was more focused on the work, just showing the work upfront. First thing you see is the work, but it's a bit lacking in context. Daniel's website is more focused about who he is, what can he do for you, and only then show you the work, which I actually think is the better approach. All right, hope this was helpful for you. Good luck to everyone, and I will catch you next week.